do across the calendar year, we do remember. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. I'll be joined in just a little bit by Ben Davis and Greg Murphy. As Harry Callis said, six days after the attacks on September 11th, we are here in the Cradle of Liberty, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where we're calling today's game while the Phillies are down in South Florida getting set to take on the Miami Marlins. Usually, ballparks are filled to the brim. At least this one usually is, as we honor those who had the most tremendous of sacrifices on that day, and we honor their memories as well. And then we play baseball, just as we will do today with Game 2 between the Phils and the Miami Marlins. So let's talk about some of the things that have already happened today when it comes to the Phillies. We've got roster moves. In fact, Joe Girardi has made a handful of adjustments to his roster. Ronald Torres had his contract selected from Lehigh Valley. Adam Morgan's been reinstated off onto the injured list. And then Ramon Rosso has been added as the 29th man for the doubleheader. There's a good chance he starts game two today of this doubleheader. Neil Walker, meanwhile, has been designated for assignment. And we welcome in Ben Davis. And Ben, the topic of conversation here in Philadelphia, and I'm sure still down in Miami, is about the Phillies' bullpen and the struggles that they've had this entire season. Yeah, I think struggles is an understatement, Tommy. Look at the numbers. They are just, they're, they're horrible, and it just doesn't seem to be getting any better for the Phillies. Look at this. Most blown saves with nine. Last in ERA, a 7.35 ERA. That is just, it's unconscionable that it's that high. Most home runs allowed. The highest batting average at 330 and the fewest innings pitched at 127 and a third. The starting pitchers have done their job for the most part. It's just this bullpen that continues to implode for the Philadelphia Phillies. And we were able to catch up with Philadelphia Phillies catcher JT Realmuth. Groups always closed down in South Florida. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet. In Philadelphia, Andrew McCutcheon leads it off in left field, then Reese Hoskins. Bryce Harper hits third, JT hits fourth. Segura, Didi, and Phil Goslin is the DH today. Alec Bohm over at third base, and Adam Hazley getting to start against the lefty, Trevor Rogers, which is significant, lefty on lefty. Rogers 1-0 with an ERA of 3.00. Really good numbers for this rookie. A lot of strikeouts. Marlins feel like he's got a chance to be really good. It's part of the reason why they felt like they could... Uh, trade Caleb Smith. Smith was traded to the Diamondbacks in the Starling Marte deal. The first pitch of the day is in there for a strike. We're underway and the count is 0-1. Cutchin hitting 243 with three uh, with five home runs, 24 runs batted in. One for five. Last that brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. It's pretty much the same lineup as last night with the exception of Chad Wallach. And that means that Starling Marte is in and hitting second. Let's see his career numbers against the Phillies. We'll talk more about that during this game because uh, they're staggeringly good, not only overall, but there's a couple of years that really stand out. And they'll face Phillies right-hander Aaron Nola. Nola 4-3, and 2.74 earned run average. He's coming off a really tough start against the Mets where he had no command of his fastball and quite honestly, didn't have command of his curveball either. You know, and the defense let him down as well. Three pitch pitcher, you got to have at least two working, and he didn't have two of them working that night. Look for him to bounce back tonight. I'm not saying he's got to throw a complete game, Tom, but he's got to go seven. 